Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We're talking about Vox Royalty in this awareness video. This is a, a piece of paid uh, promotional content that we've had the distinct pleasure to review through the Independent Investor Channel for Vox Royalty traded on the TSX uh, Venture Markets, ticker symbol VOX for our Canadian investors. And on the OTC quality board market here in the US for our US investors under the ticker symbol VOXCF, I'd like to remind all investors to do their own due diligence. All the information used in the production of this video will be provided to you in the description. This is going to be super important. You guys are going to want to stick around for this one. This is incredible. Uh, almost real time here covering uh, the latest uh, Q2 earnings coming off uh, for Vox Royalty record uh, earnings, uh, net, in net income of just over 2 million, uh, revenues of uh, just over 1.3 million. Uh, Vox Royalty does it different than the rest of the crowd. Uh, the market doesn't see it that way. We're looking at a steep, steep discount and a huge disconnect between the current stock price uh, and the value that is uh, we're going to talk about here uh, within Vox Royalty specifically with their uh, proprietary uh, intellectual property and their uh, database of over 8,000 royalties uh, that they've used to really leverage and uh, look to close deals on just about 24 royalties within the last 18 months or so, which uh, in comparison, uh, their competitors are closing around two to four per year. And I think you're going to find that the way Vox goes about this is completely different, completely unique in finding third party royalties and really looking to leverage the expertise over 30 years of uh, royalty deals on their team to find that value, unlock the value, bring it into the Vox royalty portfolio, and really look to take that royalty to the different stages of exploration to production. Now, they've got a, a, a critical mass right now of about 50 royalties, five producing royalties right now, which is what helped uh, really spur that bottom line net income for the company. Just incredible revenue uh, in Q2 2021, which forced them to actually increase their revenue guidance by 100% in 2021. Sky's the limit for this company, man. You guys are going to find that they've got uh, prod projections into 2022 that are actually supposed to boost uh, their uh, asset producing royalties from five to 10 and beyond into 2023 projected to go to 12. They've got close to 30 right now in the exploration uh, phase that are really looking to embolden uh, future earnings for Vox royalties. Guys, so I encourage you stick around for this. You're really going to want to stay for this. This is a first rollout introduction to Vox Royalty on the Independent Investor Channel. We're super glad to have uh, this content come through because I, I don't think I've ever been so excited about reviewing a company. I spent about 15 hours on this deep dive. You guys are going to want to stick with me for this summary on what I found with Vox Royalty. So here's a chart here on Vox Royalty Core coming public in May of 2020. It's really just traded sideways here for good reason. Uh, but uh, coming off of the last quarter with um, record revenues and net income, just over 2 million, 1.3 million in revenue for the quarter, uh, here trading uh, at uh, $2.48. Uh, at the time of, of filming this video here, uh, really, I, I just don't think that there's ever been uh, such a severe disconnect between the net asset value here uh, coming out of um, a quarter where they've just been able to turn out record record revenues, uh, projections to increase a uh, hundred percent, closing out 2021 here for Q3 and Q4. Uh, I just, it, it's an incredible, credible opportunity here to uh, look at the charts and see that it's really been choppy uh, in its trading uh, debut over the last uh, year and a half uh, since coming public here. Uh, that's why the, the timeliness of, of why Vox and why now is so appropriate to put this out to the greater YouTube audience. So uh, better times to come here, $2.48 again at the time of filming this video, sideways trading action here finds an extreme amount of support at $1.75 and uh, really a, a set of, of, of higher lows here uh, basing at the $2 support level 
uh, as well. But uh, settling out here just shy of two dollars and fifty cents uh, U.S. at the time of filming this video. So Vox Royalty here is the company that uh, we're going to be profiling here. Investor presentation accurate as of September 2021. Uh, traded under the uh, TSX Venture Markets uh, in Canada under the ticker symbol VOX uh, here in the U.S. for our U.S. investors on the over-the-counter quality board markets VOXCF. Vox Royalty is uh, accelerating on multiple fronts. We are going to aim to touch on each of those highlights as we move through this investor presentation and really try to separate what makes Vox Royalty stand out uh, across uh, the industry here, uh, especially compared to other royalty companies out there uh, in the same industry. So multiple elements I was able to pick out in my deep dive of Vox Royalty. Uh, this slide really speaks to the, the, the really interesting element of the uh, proprietary database with over 8,000 royalties that uh, are contained within the database. It drives a lot of um, the leads and pursuance of uh, materializing uh, some of the royalties and taking it from, you know, the different stages uh, uh, to getting it from a development into production. And really the, the spearhead of this whole operation comes from the technical team uh, of the mining engineers and the geologists that uh, are under the Vox Royalty um, uh, company here. And it just really incredible how they're able to scrutinize and acquire third-party royalties here. A little bit different strategy altogether in that they're trying to find value uh, in those non-core assets that are held by the mining companies and looking to take those on uh, as early as they can in the process. And they do so by their ability to uh, identify value there and where it makes sense uh, for those uh, non-core assets to be uh, basically parlayed to Vox Royalty and added to their larger suite of diversified royalties uh, within their portfolio. And an overview here of Vox Royalty, just for your viewing pleasure, just a timeline. It's um, uh, established in 2014, went public in May of 2020. Um, they are the owners of the world's largest proprietary royalty database of over 8,000 royalties. Uh, Vox Royalty was able to acquire uh, this database a couple years back. I think it was a key strategic move for the company as it does provide uh, a multitude of different leads uh, to different royalties in certain stages of, um, of, of exploration and of development and then finally to that production stage. So indicative by their five uh, producing royalties right now really the the undercurrent and value that exists for Vox Royalty is their ability to take um, these royalties and, and move them through the stages and uh, really get to that first gold pour, that first gold smelter um, that, that we're looking for, uh, for those royalties to start to produce. Um, they've got five uh, looking to double uh, into uh, next year, uh, looking to be at about seven uh, middle of 2022 and then to double uh, going into 2023. So Projected revenues uh, supposed to increase here uh, exponentially uh, for Vox uh, and, and really just widen that disconnect between uh, the market's uh, net asset value of Vox at 0.7% compared to its peers, um, which typically trade uh, anywhere from about 1.4 NAV all the way up to about 2.5 NAV. Uh, so at the very least, the net asset value is less than where it should be on the low end. Um, so really not getting the nod uh, in the eyes of the uh, open marketplace. Um, so looking to kind of exploit that value proposition here uh, and, and looking at uh, what Vox Royalty is doing on the inside to drive that shareholder value and, and really unlock that value in the marketplace. Industry leading acquisition growth, um, uh, 24 royalty deals since January 2019. This is unprecedented. Uh, in the industry, most of the industry uh, are making two to four deals a year. Um, they've, done, they've done 24 in the last two years. Uh, this is insane. Um, so really speaks to the ability of the management team here, um, the over 30 years of royalty experience really but being put to work to leverage 
um, the massive, massive amount of royalty deals that they've been able to do to embolden um, their uh, portfolio of royalties. Uh, the low ge geopolitical risk there, uh, looking to focus on the uh, tier one countries, Australia being the main driver there, Canada, and of course the U.S. here with uh, greater than 80% of their assets in each of those three. Uh, but they do hold a diversified uh, portfolio book across uh, eight uh, total jurisdictions, um, which is which is one of the benefits, uh, one of the big benefits of royalty companies is the ability to diversify across different jurisdictions and across different projects. Uh, but the sole purpose being here in the top tier, uh, especially in Australia, with the majority of their uh, royalties being held. Uh, in Australia. And then finally, their technical management team uh, who owns 15% uh, of Vox. So huge internal uh, ownership of Vox here, which really helps to uh, solidify that that uh, value proposition for uh, would-be shareholders uh, taking part of this company, knowing uh, the, that the insiders have a, a stake in, in uh, driving that shareholder value going forward. So as you study up on the Vox royalty uh, portfolio, you're going to find that uh, each of the royalties in and of themselves have their own personality and characteristics. And otherwise, in other words, they're in each of, of their own individual phases. And this is really incredible because while certain uh, are producing royalties, um, that is, there's a lot that are going through uh, certain different phases to step into that uh, ultimate productivity phase, which is what we're looking for as shareholders. But it takes time, and that's totally fine. And it speaks to the, the benefit of Vox Royalty in that you're not putting all of your assets within a specific junior mining company where you know the you're tied to the expenses you're tied to all of the operating expense that go into operating that mine uh, furthermore if they they have a cash draw uh, that they need and, the, and they're at max on their budget and they need to do a, a, a cash draw uh, on that uh, the royalty company is not uh, tied to any of that debt liability uh, furthermore, Vox uh, Royalty holding so many royalties uh, actually diversifies uh, the um, the exposure across multiple jurisdictions, across multiple uh, mining projects, which actually helps to actually uh, spread spread the risk out. Uh, so on a risk adjusted basis, the royalty business model uh, is is extremely attractive for that very reason. But we're looking at about 35 million of total ounces of of, uh, of associated resource on the books here for the for the assets. Uh, the important takeaway here is that there's five currently producing at the time of filming this video, producing royalties expected to double uh, into next year. Very very uh, impressive uh, to get to 10 producing royalties by the end of 2023. We're looking by uh, to have about seven. Uh, producing by June of 2022 uh, and then here we go by the end of 2023 looking to actually boost that up to 10 producing royalties that that is incredible incredible growth uh, on just one asset a uh, uh, one aspect of the company here uh, 21 of the assets at the PEA feasibility or care maintenance stage right uh, and then close to 30. So 27 assets with the, the JORC uh, in 143-101 compliant resource. So that's a, a, an important regulatory step there uh, for the resource report uh, that has come in. And then there's uh, just a couple there, three, that uh, are, are still working to gain that uh, in 143-101 compliant stage. 165,000. Uh, meters of drilling. Um, this is just incredible. So it speaks to the exploration element, all represented across the multiple royalties that are held within the portfolio at Vox Royalty. Just a quick overview here, the Vox Royalty uh, shares and capital structure. This is incredible. I uh, want to highlight no debt here. Um, obvious uh, investment here on the listed investments from uh, for Electric, uh, which is also traded on the Venture uh, Stock Exchange in Canada, uh, ELEC, that's Electric. Um, but um, really, really interesting here. Uh, trading at about $2.87 CAD here. 
um, and uh, a, a t very, very tight uh, share float here with only 39.5 million uh, shares issued in the float here and 15% uh, ownership. Uh, we kick over to the weighting here. Precious Metals makes up about 70% of the portfolio as well as non-precious. I think that's where Electric comes in because they can kind of segue some of those non-precious metal royalties and actually just sell those outright uh, to Electric. So uh, kind of a nice relationship there as it works as, as the Vox Royalty uh, really is looking to go after the precious metal space that's kind of their niche. Uh, you can see here the geopolitical um, uh, element here going uh, in predominantly the Australian market. Um, multiple, multiple reasons for that. Um, gold prices are at an all-time high in Australia, so the Aussie dollar uh, is demanding a very, very high gold premium there. So it just makes sense. Uh, the uh, uh, the local jurisdictions are easy to work in. Uh, mining is very, very supported down there. Uh, and again, it is uh, uh, their number two uh, royalty holding in Australia is Vox Royalty. So very, very impressive. And then the near term calling uh, for 12 uh, producing royalties going forward, uh, that compares to the previous slide that we're looking at about 2023. So uh, just here in a couple years, which in investing terms is absolutely the very near term looking to more than double. Um, they're uh, producing assets in the portfolio. Just very, very impressive here uh, with their uh, capital allocation, the fact that they have no debt on the books, um, and a, a very, very sizable um, in, in, uh, internal ownership of the shares outstanding. Just have to spend a few moments here in acknowledging this uh, management team that's been put together here for Vox Royalty, headed up by the CEO, uh, Mr. Kyle Floyd. Here, we're going to be interviewing uh, Mr. Floyd on the Independent Investor Channel uh, as part of this awareness content for Vox Royalty. Um, Mr. Floyd is uh, impressive, uh, to say the least. Uh, brought to the um, inception of the company in 2014, uh, brought to the public markets uh, in uh, May of 2020, and he has put together a team of all-stars. Uh, the, the network and the expertise on this team is second to none, and it really speaks to how this team is able to put together results that are uncharacteristic of the competition within the, in the industry. And, and that's the real, uh, the real interest here is that they're growing revenue so fast. They're, they're growing their portfolio book so fast, but they're one of the most undervalued companies uh, on the landscape. Um, there is multiple interviews that are um, uh, available for Spencer Cole, who is absolutely phenomenal. What, what a gem of an addition to this team. Absolutely impressive with his 10 years of experience. Um, the rest of the team here, Rian as well as Simon Cooper, um, have really worked with everybody in big industry. I mean, the who's who within big industry, Rian has worked with them. You see there BHP, Rio Tento, Rand Gold, uh, and the list goes on and on. So a massive amount of experience here and uh, just over $1.5 billion in, in royalty transaction experience. The results really do speak for themselves. And uh, I really wanted to take a moment to highlight this incredible team um, that really, it, they fire away on all cylinders in putting the best uh, royalty uh, into the portfolio to drive that shareholder value um, for, for the shareholders of the company. So eight total jurisdictions here represented across the portfolio. The, the main focus being, of course, is on Australia. And it uh, is absolutely necessary to spend just a few moments on earmarking the importance of the uh, Vox royalty presence, especially within Western Australia. You can see here uh, some of the um, names uh, associated with. They are the second largest uh, listed holder of Australian mining royalties just behind uh, Franco Nevada. There you can see uh, the assets in the producing stage currently sits at five. Uh, projected to move to five and doubling up here in the near term potential. I think that'll probably happen somewhere in the back half of 2022, uh, looking to move to seven uh, in June of 2022. So um, right around the corner here, and, th and that's the beauty of it, is these are just waiting to step into the next stage. And there, there's multiple royalties 
looking to move through the different stages here. You can see here globally um, the, the multiple jurisdictions that uh, they hold in the, the, the portfolio at Fox Real. Just to highlight here, just three key producing assets. There's uh, a few more as well. We'll allow uh, Mr. Floyd to actually expand upon this uh, when he has a chance to come on and, and really talk about the exciting uh, expansion of the uh, key producing assets, but this is what we have as of current here. So uh, the cost adjusted here uh, on the Aquilia knobbing is two uh, percent. There, cost adju adjusted revenue there at two percent, uh, one point five. The net smelter rate there capped uh, on the Siglia Lola, and then the Janet Ivy as well um, at uh, just uh, fifty cents a ton. So just in incredible here. This is what drove the revenues in Q two this year, uh, twenty twenty one. I would encourage you guys to go back and look at the report because um, this was the first time here that um, they. They uh, got a record net income uh, and were uh, positive cash flowing for the first time. So just, just firing on all cylinders uh, made possible here by the top of the iceberg in their key producing assets. Some additional growth assets that are held within the portfolio, Vox Royalty as well, um, targeted dates there uh, on some of these properties. And again, Mr. Floyd will uh, uh, be so kind as to uh, expand upon any updates that are applicable here, um, but just some very, very exciting things on the horizon as each of these projects look to uh, step into the production phase uh, under the Vox Royalty portfolio. And just a continued summary here of some of the growth assets well at, at Vox Royalty in the different stages here. Um, the 8,000 meters of drilling that are ongoing here, um, just part of the significant amount of drilling that's going on across the Vox portfolio, uh, feasibility studies ongoing, and then development studies commencing as the, at the Ashburton there in Australia as well. So you can see here very centric in focusing in on the Australian market uh, for, for obvious reasons here, but it's nice to see a very, very dominant a sample portfolio, a sample size of the uh, Australian uh, royalties here in the portfolio. We will discuss this as well with Mr. Floyd, the CEO. He's going to discuss a little bit different of an approach here in acquiring uh, from third parties the uh, royalties um, that are you know, undervalued, identified as non-core assets by the mining companies and uh, Vox Royalty. Um, this is their wheelhouse. This is where they step in and try to get those uh, at the very inception here. Now, this graph starts at the three-month mark, uh, and it very elegantly walks you through the quick uh, upgrade and the stages of each of the royalties. Each upgrade in each of the stage obviously adds a, a significant a, a, a amount of underlying value to the royalty itself. Um, but there was some interesting uh, information that I came across when the non-core asset is actually trimmed from the actual mining company itself, which, which adds no a net asset value to the underlying mine itself, uh, but there could be some arbitrage opportunity when those royalties are actually assigned uh, to a royalty company, especially one like Vox Royalty that's adding um, that uh, otherwise kind of meaningless asset uh, to the mine itself. But adding it to the portfolio, knowing that it's going to be managed, knowing it's going to be tracked, and knowing that that uh, asset value is going to stand alone uh, within a grander portfolio. So it really has a chance to accelerate uh, in, in and of itself uh, in each singular entity, in each of the royalty cases, uh, as the improvements at the mine occur. Um, that uh, when those uh, cumulatively are held in the Vox Royalty portfolio, that they really have a chance to um, to realize their maximum benefit as they um, are are allowed to prolong along this timeline uh, of um, of potential acquisition of of drilling significant drilling uh, of of project expansion things like that as things are progressing at the mine. Um, it only helps the bottom line and, and the value uh, proposition uh, of the royalty itself and the value uh, of the total portfolio for shareholders. So I cover a lot of companies and I don't think I've seen one with such a disconnect in the value proposition here, Vox Royalty, and what I'm seeing here um, on the bottom line numbers, these do not lie. Okay, we stand at about five right now producing 
uh, royalties and uh, projections here mid 2022 uh, right on track to seven uh, and then eventually doubling to 10 and then in the near term calling for 12 um, these projections are made based on very very hard and fast data you can see to the right the chart of Vox accelerated revenues just blowing everybody else out of the water I mean the, the these are just incredible projections at 750 percent um, looking to grow re revenue year over year here um, uh, coming off just a, an absolute banner quarter in Q2 2021. Um, so very exciting on the books as they look to embolden their portfolio uh, of, of producing assets uh, to really help embolden that bottom line uh, accelerated revenue growth uh, going forward into the coming couple of years. Could benefit yourself by spending a couple moments on this slide here and really trying to understand the value proposition here. 0.7 times net asset value compared to their peers. Uh, it, it just incredible. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't have to be quite as careful. I will ask uh, the CEO when he comes on to the channel as to why he thinks this is. Um, I, I have my, um, uh, my insights and a few things that have happened here um, since raising a little bit of capital, coming public uh, into public markets. Um, but this is an extremely uh, undervalued company right here compared to peers usually demanding uh, a little bit better valuation 1.5 to about 2.4 uh, price to net asset value and you can see there Vox is trading uh, less than any other company. Now the, the interesting part about that is if you look to the right here this is the addition of the, um, the, the additional properties the actual royalties that are actually paying out so in Q4 2020, they only had one. They had two in the pre-production stays plus the Higginsville. So as you work down there, you get down to the 2024, 2026 anticipated, you're looking at a significant, that's where the 10 um, um, asset producing assets come into play as well as the additional. So you wanna talk about hyper growth. You know, we're only talking about a couple years from now um, adding that much to the bottom line, um, but trading at a discount. Why Vox? Why now? It's because it's extremely, extremely undervalued. Uh, and the stock is extremely uh, undervalued compared to the rest of the industry, uh, compared to what they're doing, compared to uh, the rest of the peers in the industry. And Vox has actually provided um, a lot of the uh, portfolio, the 50 plus royalties that they've gotten, what stage that they're in, really interesting stuff across all the jurisdictions that we had spoke about, what the commodity is. So very, very straightforward for your perusal. I do encourage you to take a quick look at this. Um, you know, the, these for awareness purposes, I, I've never, never looked at a, a better royalty company than, uh, than Vox Royalty. This has just been incredible. And it really kind of comes down to the intellectual property that we spoke about, uh, really uh, down to um, the multiple royalties in different stages, the 30 that kind of set themselves up for the future. And then as of shooting this video, the five producing assets uh, that they've got to drive that bottom line revenue um, and, um, and, and, er and net income. Uh, that they've got going on there and then the projections here just in the near term to double up on those uh, producing assets um, they are firing on all cylinders so uh, they've made the full portfolio available uh, for your review and i will make this available to you in the investor presentation in the description of the video as well and for any investors out there anybody interested in finding out more information on vox royalty you can always uh, find uh, a ton of information on boxroyalty.com. I did a thorough review of their website. It's impressive. It's ex extremely incredible. And you can see further information on the portfolios that they cover, a little bit more information about Vox Royalty, as well as to subscribe to some press releases as these uh, different uh, minds uh, enter into different phases. Those are released through the Vox Royalty uh, website as well. So you can kind of track the progress as each of these royalties step through the different phases uh, stepping toward that ultimate production goal that they've got here. So real privilege here to uh, uh, cover Vox Royalty. Um, this, this is a very, very rapidly growing company here, a business model that's extremely unique and a team to execute uh, in all capacities here. With that, we'll kick you back here and we'll conclude the video.
All right, guys, so we've come out of the review of Vox Royalty here. You're going to want to stay tuned for the interview CEO and chairman, uh, Mr. Kyle Floyd. He's going to be on the channel. He's going to be able to uh, really hit home on some of the points that we discussed on this introduction and deep dive of Vox Royalty here. Just some exciting stuff. They do it different than Vox. And with the steep discount in the market right now, trading at just 0.7% of net asset value compared to peers, I, I don't, the, the disconnect is real and the disconnect is right here in front of you. And it's only going to be a matter of time before the market picks up on the value proposition that exists within Vox Royalty. Guys, if you enjoy the content coming through the channel, make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of this video and share the message with anybody out there that you know is interested in the gold and silver precious metal royalty space. Nobody's doing it better than Vox Royalty right now, accelerating and firing on all cylinders here. Exciting times at Vox with the management team and looking to leverage their uh, intellectual property with their over 8,000 royalties within their proprietary database that they've got. Exciting times to come. It'll be incredible to track this company, and I recommend you guys do the same. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this message, and good luck in your investment future.